The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Welcome to worship with Eastminster Presbyterian. We've been in the midst of a 12-week sermon series entitled Unraveled, but today we are taking a pause in that series for our annual program congregational meeting. So today in worship, through the sermon, you will hear from the elders and deacons. They will be telling stories. They will be testifying to the ways that God has been at work at Eastminster, the ways that God is faithful. As we begin worship, I'd invite you, as has been our practice, to create worship space in your home, to light a candle. as a visible reminder of God's presence with us in each of our homes and places of worship. And please join together as we call ourselves to worship. The Lord says, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When we pass through the waters, God is with us. When we walk through the fire, we will not be burned. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. God is about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Enjoy, come join our church in song. For Christ the Lord has led us through the ages long. In bold accord, come celebrate the journey now and praise the have come and gone, and still God reigns supreme, empowering God to catch the vision, dream the dream. In bold accord, come celebrate the journey now and praise the be our friend, let wisdom be our guide, as we in mission magnify the crucified. In bold accord, come celebrate the journey now and praise the Church in joy, come join our church in song. For Christ the Lord has triumphed o'er the ages long. In bold accord, come celebrate the journey now and pray. Through Jesus Christ, God has entrusted us with the message and ministry of reconciliation. Trusting in God's grace, let us confess our sin. Holy One, our great Redeemer, you have created us to be your people. You have called us from captivity to freedom. You have delivered us from death to life. Yet we have wandered in the wilderness. We have failed to keep your commandments. We have put our trust in false idols. Forgive us, God of grace. Fill us with hope. Free us with mercy. 
and lead us into the land of your promise. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. My friends, anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life has gone. A new life has begun. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. And now as a forgiven people, let us share greetings of peace with each other by taking out our phone and sending a text message to a family or friend or a church member. May the peace of Christ be with you all. I'd like to invite the children a little bit closer to the screen. It's Mr. Neal, and today's a special day in our church as we are sharing the stories of what's happened in our church this year. And so I wanted you to see a few things, and I wonder what it might remind you of for anything you've done with church this year. Here's a story Bible that we give to the children at baptism or other special occasions. There's a piece of our worship packet. This one happens to be a finger labyrinth. This one is praying in color. We talked about that in a earlier online worship service. And there's a wheel. We were spinning and singing some songs. So I wonder if any of these things or anything else you can remember from the church this past year. Have your parents type in your story of the church year. And as you listen to the other stories being told from the other ministry teams as we go forward in the service, I want you to listen to the stories that are told. And I want you to listen and tell me how many times you hear the words church, story, or God. Let us pray. Oh God, thank you for helping us live out your story in the ways we learn, teach, and grow together. Let us pay attention as your story is told at Eastminster and in the world. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, by the gift of your spirit, let us be grounded in your word, always growing in your wisdom and bearing good fruit in your world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A reading from Isaiah chapter 43, verses 10 through 21. Listen to what the Spirit is saying to the church. You are my witnesses, says the Lord, and my servant, whom I have chosen so that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me, no God was formed, nor shall there be any after me. I, I am the Lord, and besides me, there is no Savior. I declared and saved and proclaimed when there was no strange God among you. 
and you are my witnesses, says the Lord. I am God, and also henceforth I am he. There is no one who can deliver from my hand. I work, and who can hinder it? Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, for your sake I will send to Babylon and break down all the bars, and the shouting of the Chaldeans will be turned to lamentation. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings out chariot and horse, army and warrior, they lie down, they cannot rise. They are extinguished, quenched like a wick. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth, do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The wild animals will honor me the jackals and the ostriches, for I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I formed for myself, so that they might declare my praise. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. As I look back at the 2019-2020 program year in the area of Christian education and formation, I looked at a calendar that we set out. As we started with the year-long theme, We Make the Road by Walking, by Brian McLaren. Each section of that book was given a title. Alive in the Story of Creation is how we started the year. And I remember how we gathered intergenerationally in the green room, packed in for lunch after worship, and baskets that were prepared by Bev Bonning with different supplies that could be used as each table was assigned a day of creation to tell a story, to be alive in creation. It was a joy to see the creativity, the imagination come alive in that space. Also as part of that series, we had weekly sermon discussions we began small groups, including one at Bircham Retirement Home. The story of stuff, let there be stuff, was led by Susan Smalley and not just a class about stuff, but it led to action. And we now have churchwide recycling because of it. We moved on to the season of Advent and it was alive in the adventures of Jesus Star words were distributed at the all-church lunch to start Advent. And we gathered in the narthex and we made ornaments that were the genealogy of Jesus from the gospel. And as we did that later in Advent, there was a worship service where our kids came and got each one of those ornaments from members of the congregation and added them to a tree as the story was told. We move into the beginning of Lent and our theme was alive in a global uprising. Little did we know at the end of February that uprising globally would be a pandemic that would turn our patterns upside down. And as we went later into the season, our scheduled theme was to be alive in the spirit of God. And although we didn't all make it that far in the book as things change, we have continued to be alive in the spirit of God 
with such creativity. Check out our YouTube channel with Spin and Sing and Storytime with Mrs. B and Faith Matters interviews. Participate in our 21-day racial justice challenge that's still ongoing this month and will begin again anew in August. We are alive in Christ, in Christian education. The promises that have been made to us in baptism are being lived out in some amazing ways, and we have had the opportunity to grow, to be co-creators with God. Do we not perceive it? God is still about to do a new thing. Let's be open to the possibilities. When Kristen asked us to share how God has been at work through our committee work this past year, I asked each of the deacons to send me their thoughts. The one thing that kept coming through over and over again was what a caring community we have. Here are some excerpts. This was written by our deacon, Bev Bonning. Being the deacon contact for many of our elderly congregation members has been very rewarding and made me realize even more how their support of Eastminster over the years has been essential to our present day mission work, Christian education endeavors, and congregational growth. Sharing their wisdom, insights, and faith journey stories provide a rich history and foundation upon which to continue to build our church in the future. From Judy Dickinson, as the deacon who takes care of transportation, I feel that helping to provide rides to parishioners has been as beneficial to me as it is to them. I was able to meet and talk with riders and drivers more than I would otherwise. It has provided me a new way, as a newer member of the church, to meet and visit with others. It has been a way for them to attend church services and me to get to know them better. It's a simple ride, but the gratitude shown has been very rewarding. I feel it has provided me a way to do the Lord's work. The riders have been very grateful and the drivers have been very gracious and willing to answer the call to provide rides. I feel it has been a small way to serve the church and others. And isn't that what it's all about? Being involved and serving others. As it says in Acts chapter 20 verse 28, Keep watch over yourselves and all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Be shepherds of the church of God, which he bought with his own blood. I feel that one of the important roles of the deacons is to help the church feel and function as a beloved family. As a relatively new member of this congregation, I found that finding people to serve as door greeters each Sunday was a special function that helped me to get to know people in the congregation as more than just a name in the directory. 
I looked forward to making these calls and found the warm responses were heartening and fun and filled me with a strong sense of purpose. Folks took on the role of door greeters with enthusiasm and with few exceptions showed up as planned and did their job with joy and cheerfulness. Joshua 1.8 Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. The challenges due to COVID-19, which we now face as a church, brings us into new territory, requiring us to be creative in our solutions to reach out to one another as a congregation. The process of keeping in touch remotely via phone calls or emails has brought a closeness to one another, even as we are physically distanced. There is a caring and compassion brought about by the knowledge that we are all in this together as we continue to be one body of Christ. As our summer affirmation of faith states, and I believe that when life unravels, God is there to stitch my wounds together, to hold me in the palm of God's hands, to tell me of love, and to invite me into a new journey. We are all on that new journey together. Let us build a house where prophets speak and words are strong and true. Where all God's children dare to seek, to dream God's reign anew. Here the cross shall stand as witness and as symbol of God's grace. Here as one we claim the faith of Jesus, all oh, are welcome, all oh, are welcome, all oh, are welcome in this place. When this program year began, the Worship and Music Committee felt a call to do something new this year. We felt God calling us to include more members of the congregation in what is one of the biz biggest aspects of the life of the church, our worship services. Pastor Kristen conducted worship leader training and a sign up was made available for members to step up and volunteer to lead worship. But participation in the training was low and very few people actually signed up to lead on Sundays. We weren't sure why we felt called to make this change when it seemed like it was something that the congregation wasn't quite ready to do. Well, regardless of what we do or intend to do, God is continually showing that his purposes will indeed move forward. Beginning March 15, 2020, God's work in our congregation saw a major shift. We were forced to take everything online. The first two Sundays of our online worship were conducted with our pastor and staff broadcasting remotely from the sanctuary. After that time, a government stay-at-home order then required each element of the service to be done by individuals in their own homes recording video to be compiled into an online service to be done through Facebook Live each week. Our wonderful church staff stepped up their technological game and learned how to compile and edit video and web content to deliver dynamic services each week. We thought we were seeing the calling of bringing more people into active involvement in worship services being put on hold until a future date when we would be able to again meet all together in person. God indeed had other plans. As we read in Isaiah 43, 18 through 19, do not remember the former things 
or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? These verses are definitely coming to fruition in our current worship situation in ways that we never would have considered. Not only have we not been limited to only seeing the faces of our dedicated Eastminster staff during online worship services, but we have also seen a dramatic increase in the number of members participating in worship leadership each week. Since the beginning of our online worship began, we have had 62 different members of the church participate as musicians, staff, and liturgists. We have also had many more people contribute pictures and videos to each worship service. We are so grateful to God for continuing to move among us and to work to further the life of the church, and we look forward to seeing all of the new things that he has in store for us as we continue to move into the future as this great body of Christ. There's the old hymn that goes, the church is not a building, the church is not a steeple, the church is not a resting place, the church is a people. The church is the people, and that is true, and yet our church building has always held an important place in our lives. The building is where we gather each Sunday to praise God and to greet our family in Christ. The building is where we meet for Bible studies and break bread together. It's the place we've welcomed community groups into and taught our children about God. The building is where we've celebrated the promises of God's claim on our lives in baptism and reaffirmed that promise in death. In the beginning of our year, our building was being used seven days a week for small groups, UKIRK, church meetings, English for speakers of other languages, support groups such as AA, and so much more. Now in these COVID days, our building has become silent and empty. So yes, we proclaim the church is a people, and yet we also grieve that we cannot gather in our sacred place right now to protect the safety of our people. The Building and Grounds Committee is using this time of rest for our building to look at the work that needs to be done to make sure it continues to serve our purposes into the future. The session this past week approved three projects, putting on a new roof, replacing the air conditioners in the sanctuary, and repaving the driveway and parking lot. We hope to do this work now when the building is empty, so it becomes a place of welcome, comfort, hospitality, and growth when we return to it. The scripture reading today tells us that God is doing a new thing. We pray, as the Building and Grounds Committee, that our building enables us to look at and participate in God's new thing, that the building not be the center of our ministry because as we see in these days, ministry can continue and thrive without it, but that the building be a tool in our mission and ministry in the community. The church is not a building, but we give thanks for the ways the building and our grounds enables us to do the ministry. And we seek ways always to be faithful stewards of this resource, which is a gift from God. We offer up our prayers for our community and all that remains safe and healthy and look forward to the day when we can once again gather in person at East Minster.
Good morning. As chair of the mission committee, I would like to tell you how we have managed to continue our commitment to Advent House Ministries since the shutdown that began in March. Realizing that it would be inadvisable to have 10 volunteer cooks bringing food to the church and for more volunteers to transport it to Advent House to heat and serve, a new approach was needed. People still would be hungry and need to eat. Fortunately, Jim Robertson, who heads up our second Saturday meal ministry with Advent House, suggested that $400 be sent to Advent House to cover the cost of buying food that's easily available, such as pizza, salad, and sandwiches. That was met with enthusiasm from this committee, Eastminster staff, and Advent House. We thank Jim for bringing this inspiration to the committee and Advent House. Susan Cancrow, who is the executive director of Advent House, was fully on board with this as a solution and shared with me that people being fed were delighted to have the menu changes that sandwiches and pizza afforded them. For several months now, we have been sending $400 each month to Advent House as this has become the best method of feeding the hungry. We are adjusting to ways to meet the needs of this mission activity. This flexibility reflects a portion of today's scripture from Isaiah. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. We expect this method to continue for some time and ask for your donations. Please realize that each month when volunteers bought groceries, they were spending anywhere from 25 to $35 a month and donating that freely. If you could send donations to the church earmarked for Advent House, it would be appreciated. Donations may be also made electronically through the church website at the separate button marked Advent House. As always, thank you for your support, and thanks be to God. Amen. Peace be with you all. A community is a gathering of people who share common causes and beliefs. We all live in many communities neighborhoods, families, volunteer groups, and of course, our church. These past many months, we have been forced to separate from those communities to hunker down on our own. And at times, it's been hard and a little bit scary. For many of us, the church community is central to our lives and identities. I know that I miss you all, and I'm looking forward to the time when we can safely be together again. When we were still able to gather, I smile in remembering our Mardi Gras event at the end of February. That was a moment in our community life that we imagined could continue without giving it a second thought. We shared fellowship and a delicious home-cooked traditional Mardi Gras meal, and were able to be silly together in the spirit of laissez les bon temps rouler. Let the good times roll. Little did we know that the good times had an expiration date. Now we've been limited to social distancing and masks for the protection of ourselves and others. The community life plans for 2019 and into 2020 have been compromised, and we can only hope that some of those plans, both spiritual and fun, will be able to happen as circumstances permit. Our church leaders have found new and creative ways for us to be in community by providing Sunday school, Bible study, children's programming, worship, and fellowship online. Community Life will move forward with faith and film discussions in support of Eastminster's recent statement and commitment to studying the issues of racial justice in our communities. The church community has a moral obligation to inform itself about human and civil rights violations that our Black and persons of color communities suffer on a daily basis. A community is a gathering of people who share common causes 
and beliefs. Our church community helps identify us, not only who we are, but whose we are. Amen. I'll see you in church. I am about to do a new thing, says the Lord. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? These are words spoken to a people in exile, to the Israelites who are now in Babylon, away from home and temple. To these people, the prophet speaks these words of comfort and promise from God. I am the Lord. The one who brought you out of Egypt, who has declared and saved and proclaimed. And I am still with you. Do not fear. God invites the people in exile to gaze towards the future, to take what they know of the past and not sentimentalize it or wish to go back to normal, but to collectively imagine a new future. Do you see it? A future in which the wild animals honor God, a future in which the wilderness is transformed, becoming safe and lush. Thirst are quenched. The dry mouths of the people are now filled with praise. From barrenness, comes abundance. Do you not perceive it? The scripture reading from Isaiah is at the center of an initiative from the denomination called Vital Congregations. We as a congregation began this initiative in January and the leadership of our church studied this text asking what might be the new thing happening among us? How is the spirit at work at Eastminster? None of us could have predicted that as we wondered together how the Spirit might be calling us into something new, that a something new would happen a few short weeks later. A something new that involved quarantining at home, meetings and Bible studies on Zoom, virtual worship and virtual coffee hours. This is not a something new that any of us wanted. It feels like a newness that is veiled in darkness and death. Which might have been how the Israelites felt in exile, unable to go to their place of worship, wondering when life would feel normal again or if they even knew how to define normal anymore. And in these days, which feel like wilderness days, I've been wondering about the way that God makes in the wilderness, the way that God makes in the desert. Because as the text says, God works and who can hinder it? 
This way in the wilderness, perhaps, is the gift that has come as you all have cared for one another. The many phone calls being made to check in on each other, ask how you are doing and what can be done to help. This way in the wilderness is virtual worship, which is not the same as in-person worship, of course. That can't be replaced. And yet, worship continues with more people participating than ever. This way in the wilderness is the opportunity to stop and reevaluate what really matters. As I've talked to folks, what people miss the most is people, being together, the fellowship that happens when we are physically in the same room together. Yes, our programs matter, but the heart of who we are as a church is relationships. When the lockdown began, I, like so many others, took out my calendar and I started erasing things. Retreats, meetings, vacations, time with friends. And then I wondered, how do I plan for the future? What I've learned what I am still learning is that I need to sit loosely with my own plans and projects. I need to let go of certainty and allow myself to be open and flexible enough to change. And being open requires courage and humility. I do not know what the next year will hold for Eastminster. I do not know when we will get to worship in person again. I do not know how the church will look whenever we return to in-person gatherings, but I think it'll look different. I keep reminding myself that it's not about getting back to normal. Things have changed and they will continue to change in some ways that we know, but most of which we will only discover as we stumble across them. But we started this pandemic in Michigan in Lent. And we remember that the newness that came with Jesus' resurrection, it only came after suffering and death. It was a newness that was born out of loss. There is no other way. I am about to do a new thing, says the Lord. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? The new day is coming. It might still be beyond my human imagination, but it is not beyond the scope of hope. May we journey forward together, loving each other into that newness loving each other into that future. Let us do so holding on to the words of comfort from the beginning of this chapter of Isaiah, chapter 43, remembering that we do not make this journey alone, holding tight to the baptismal promises that we belong to God. And so hear God's words to you. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel your Savior. Amen. Within the word, built 
of tears and cries and laughter, prayers of faith and songs of grace. Let this house proclaim from floor to rafter, all a welcome, all a welcome, all a welcome in this place. The psalmist tells us, Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another. Satisfy us by your loving kindness in the morning so we will rejoice and be glad all the days of our life. May the graciousness of the Lord our God be upon us and prosper the work of our hands. Today we remember and we give thanks for the faithfulness and vision of those charter members who on April 14th, 1957, began Eastminster Presbyterian Church. One of those charter members is still a current member today, Phyllis Irwin. And so we look back and we remember offering thanks for what God has done in our midst so that with hopefulness, we can trust in God's leading for the future. With hopefulness, we can trust that one day we will return to this building. We also acknowledge and give thanks for all those who have been members of Eastminster for 50 years or more. If we were in the sanctuary, I would ask that group to stand up so that we could see and acknowledge them. So today, instead, we offer a slideshow of their pictures and we give thanks for them. Joining that group this year, Alan and Elaine Cable, and Mary Jo Shankland. We remember with joy our common calling to serve Christ, and we give thanks for those who have been serving Christ in this particular place. Thank you for your continued service to Eastminster. Let us pray. Receive our gratitude, holy God, for the years through which you have led us and open us to the future you promise. Thank you for all the saints who have stood among us, whose memory still enlivens and emboldens our faith and witness. Thank you for those who witness to your love in this place as deacons and elders, as faithful stewards, as disciples, continuing to grow and learn and serve together. Give us trust in your abiding Holy Spirit that we may find joy and peace in our life together, that we may continue to minister in this community with patience and love with wisdom and joy. Amen.
If you're worshiping with us on Facebook, I'd invite you to comment if you have a joy or a concern to be shared. You can also contact me through email or phone. And tomorrow I'll send out a full list of prayer concerns to our community. Let us pray. Almighty God, in Jesus Christ, you taught us to pray. Guide us by your Holy Spirit that our prayers may serve your will and show your steadfast love through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. God, our creator, we pray for the world you have made. Overthrow evil powers, right what is wrong. Feed and satisfy those who thirst for justice. Heal all those who are sick so that all your children may freely enjoy your creation and joyfully sing your praises. Gracious God, we pray for the church. You have called us to be the church of Jesus Christ. Even as we are apart, keep us one in faith and service, proclaiming the good news to the world, that all may believe you are love and turn to your ways. Oh God, we cannot love unless we love our neighbors. And so we pray that you remove hate and prejudice from us and from all people, so that all your children may be reconciled with those we fear, resent, or threaten, and live together in your peace. Mighty God, sovereign over the nations, we pray for those who govern us. Direct those who make, administer, and judge our laws and others in authority among us, that they may be guided by your wisdom and love for all people. Merciful God, you bear the pain of the world. Look with compassion on those who are sick. Comfort those who sorrow and grieve. Bless us and those we love. Draw us close to you and to each other. And with the confidence of children, we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The earth is the Lord and all that is within it. We give thanks for the many gifts that God gives to us. And we return our offerings to God. Today, the session gives thanks for you and for your faithful support of Eastminster Presbyterian Church. During the start of the pandemic and virtual worship, we worried about whether or not our finances would remain steady in these uncertain times. And because of your faithfulness and your generosity, our finances have, our giving has remained just as planned and predicted through our pledges. And we give thanks for that. Thank you. Thank you for your support of Eastminster. May we all continue to be faithful stewards of what God has given us.
सीजो हम बनाइए वो 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 सीजो हम बनाइए सीजो हम बनाइए वो 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 सीजो हम बनाइए कुम शावें जाबूला सीजो हम बनाइए कुम शावें जाबूला सीजो हम बनाइए We will walk with God, my brothers. We will walk with God. We will walk with God, my sisters. We will walk with God. We will go rejoicing till the kingdom has come. We will go rejoicing till the kingdom has come. We will walk with God, my brothers. We will walk with God. We will walk with God, my sisters. We will walk with God. We will go rejoicing till the kingdom has come. We will go rejoicing till the kingdom has come. Sizo hamba na ye, wo wo wo. Sizo hamba na ye. Sizo hamba na ye, wo wo wo. Sizo hamba na ye. Gum sha wen ja bula si zo ham banaye. Gum sha wen ja bula si zo ham banaye. I remind you that our annual program congregational meeting continues. On Zoom, directly following this worship service, we'll start the meeting right at 11 o'clock. So please log on to Zoom so that we can vote on our officers. And as we go, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord be kind and gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.